Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Can China's semiconductor industry overcome its sluggishness, facing a bottleneck in its lithography equipment industry? Even ASML, a world-leading company, is now facing a tough announcement from China. According to public information, China has officially notified ASML that if it completely halts lithography equipment exports to China, ASML will be required to repurchase all thousands of units previously sold to China, totaling nearly 500 billion renminbi. This staggering figure is not only a strategic tactical exercise among companies, but also a major reversal of the global technology and trade landscape. China's move is by no means a spur-of-the-moment move, but rather a carefully considered counterattack. From the escalating Sino-US technological confrontation to the Dutch government's cooperation with the US in tightening export controls, chip equipment has become a focal point. Previously, it was believed that large companies could not engage in direct confrontation, after all, few could effectively disrupt the global supply chain. But now, a Chinese announcement has heightened everyone's vigilance. If ASML chooses to completely halt supply, it will not only have to return the heavy orders and investments made by Chinese companies, but may also face legal consequences for its patent protection in China. This wasn't just an economic threat. It was a clear-cut statement of, if you really cut off, I'll corner you, culminating in the emotional conflict. In stark contrast, Chinese semiconductor companies haven't waited for handouts from outsiders. Instead, the past two years have seen the most aggressive push for domestic production. Leading companies like SMIC have steadily advanced towards mass production of 7 nanometer chips through innovative processes like N plus 1 and N plus 2. Public market data speaks volumes. By early 2025, the expansion of SMIC's new Shanghai base will be completed, significantly increasing production capacity. Semiconductor laboratories in Shanghai, Shenzhen, Wuhan, and other locations are frantically catching up, driving the entire upstream and downstream sectors, and gradually establishing a path for independent technological development. At the national level, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology and the Ministry of Science and Technology have publicly increased R&D funding and introduced a series of new policies, including talent attraction, and innovation platforms. Both the government and businesses are clearly going all in. Who would tolerate being choked by others? In fact, numerous data points also reveal the underlying tension. ASML's dependence on the Chinese market far exceeds popular belief. In 2023 alone, sales in the Chinese market accounted for 29% of ASML's total revenue, in the first half of 2024, this figure skyrocketed to 49%. The semiconductor equipment industry, a high-tech, high-investment industry, simply cannot thrive without a large market. With exports to China restricted, ASML is facing significant financial strain, forcing the Dutch government to urgently implement a 2.5 billion euro aid package to support the company's expansion of new equipment and R&D. This initiative, which involves both government support and strategic adjustments by the company, can only temporarily alleviate pressure and will not offset the significant impact of losing the Chinese market. After all, everyone knows that this fiscal injection is merely a stopgap measure. China, the world's largest chip consumer market, remains indispensable. Looking back, the announcement of the 500 billion yuan buyback has already caused a global uproar. ASML's latest equipment, with each unit costing hundreds of millions of yuan and with thousands of units in total, a buyback would instantly plunge the company into a cash flow crisis, impacting ongoing operations and employee positions. Many industry experts have analyzed that if ASML truly loses the Chinese market, it will simply not be able to sustain its massive R&D and production system solely in Europe, or even elsewhere globally. This isn't just a matter of one company losing money, 
it's a risk to the entire European high-tech industry chain. This isn't just about equipment, it also involves the legal bottom line of patent protection. If technological cooperation is completely severed and China no longer adheres to existing patent agreements, many local laws and policies could be adjusted. According to public information, China's patent law and related regulations have been continuously improved in recent years, providing room for localized discretion, especially in the face of extreme external circumstances. If the legitimacy of ASML's patents in China is weakened, or even terminated, its technological barriers and market share would suffer a severe blow. Its previously exclusive process routes could be rapidly replaced by domestically produced ones. This potential legal change has sparked considerable discussion within the legal community, with many lawyers and intellectual property experts stating that China is fully capable of implementing targeted patent termination measures to maintain its technological advantage. For the global industry landscape, if this conflict continues to escalate, it is likely to cause a major reshuffle. Chinese companies are breaking through the bottleneck themselves and accelerating independent research and development. Even if initial product quality doesn't match the best internationally, as long as mass production and innovation continue, the history of extreme dependence on external supply will eventually be over. Conversely, ASML and the European chip industry will be dragged into immense uncertainty. Nearly every international semiconductor giant is now assessing the importance of the Chinese market. No one is taking a risk, deciding whether to continue collaborating with China or aligning with the United States. In this process, various new technologies and market options are constantly emerging. For example, China is gradually developing unique technologies in optoelectronic chips, advanced materials, and micro-nano manufacturing. This not only supports domestic industrial upgrading, but also forces international peers to reassess future trends. Industry experts have long pointed out that the global semiconductor market has entered a multipolar era, with no single market leader dominating. If China can truly break through with policies and technology, it could drive historic changes in the entire ecosystem. Whether at the policy level or in market competition, every step is like dancing on a knife's edge, with no clear winner. It is clear that the battle over lithography equipment is no longer a simple trade dispute. Technology, independent innovation, the law, and the global market are all intertwined, and no one can escape the consequences. The buyback requirements and patent disputes may be just the beginning. The true test of patience and wisdom will be found in the subsequent moves and responses. China continues to expand its semiconductor capabilities, while ASML struggles to maintain its global dominance. All of this makes the ultimate outcome unpredictable. The world of technology is so volatile that no one dares to confidently claim that China will remain trapped in a bottleneck for eternity. As for the long-term path forward, the answer lies only in continuous innovation and industrial upgrading.